Yo, yo, what's going on, folks? It's Mo Genie King in office, Mo Genie, baby. And I'm here with a special guest, one of my dudes, the main man, Don Willie himself. Hey, Don, man, give a shout to the people. Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Don Willie back again here with my man, Mo Genie, to discuss episode two from season seven of the walking dead all right man yo let's let's get into this one this one was fire oh man these episodes are coming so quick so fast i mean by the time we know this the season will be done for all the loyal subs on the mojini platform we're doing a little different thing tonight we're talking walking dead folks this is another show that y'all know i like a lot of people like it we talk about it it's one of our favorite shows Y'all saw last week. We didn't get to do the review on last week. Spoilers. Y'all know what happened. Negan did the business. He did the dirt. This episode was a little bit different. It was completely different. Don, what would you think of the episode, man? Yeah, man. You know, it's crazy because, like, after what happened last week, this definitely provided a lot of levity. You know, I mean, we got to see a man with a tiger. With a tiger, you know, like, I don't even know if there's any way you could possibly top that. I mean, the dude is a king, and he's got a tiger. I, I, I don't even know what else, to, what else to say besides that. Yeah, this, this was a little shocking. They definitely brought out the CGI money, you know, maybe a little Game of Thrones maneuver and, you know, using that CGI budget. Because, really, I don't think The Walking Dead had used any CGI you know, at first you're looking at this tiger and you're like, man, did they really train a tiger or is that CGI? I'm pretty sure it's CGI. I mean, yeah, listen, uh, it looked CGI enough to me. Like it, like they, they did a, a pretty decent job blending, but I could tell that it wasn't uh, a real tiger. And besides, I don't think that they would take the risk because, you know, uh, what happens if the tiger actually goes tiger? You know, you, you don't want to hurt any of the actors. Uh, but, hey, for what it was, I thought it was spectacular. I thought it added a brand new dimension to the show that people hadn't seen in a while. And it was cool because it's just one of those things where instead of it being all, you know, just this heft to it, you know, we got some levity. And you can take a second and breathe and just have fun with the episode. Yeah, basically. And, like, this was completely different from last week. I mean, this episode was a real cool down. This gave us a look at some other characters, not with the main group, not with Rick and them's group. It's, it, it's Carol and Morgan doing their thing with another, basically another clan. Um We've already met the Saviors. That's Negan's clique. That's their gang. It's a cult, really. It's a death cult, in my opinion. And that's what it is. Like, them dudes got Stockholm Syndrome. Them dudes is, you know, manipulated. And, you know, they, 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 they following the leader right now because they don't want to get their they head bashed in. So that's what's going on with the Saviors. We meet the kingdom people. And we've already met the Hilltop. Hilltop gang, that's Jesus in them's group. Now, this is a brand new group. The kingdom, King Ezekiel. Let's first talk about when, when this episode starts. We first see Carol um, trying to run away, and she gets saved by people on horses. We're introduced to these people rocking horses, which is kind of like crazy because, you know, in Game of Thrones, the Night's King is using dead, you know, horses. And, like, on this show, you're like, can these horses become walkers too? You know what I mean? Like, that's how I was picturing these horses. Like, are there walker horses out here? You know, but that's another that's another theory time for something else. Carol is seeing zombies as real people. Now, a lot of people speculated she's having some sort of mental breakdown. Well, what'd you think of that scene, man? Well, I thought that was kind of crazy because you see Carol and she's seen the walkers, she sees them turn into actual people, and then you have the whole thing with the people from the kingdom who are actually chopping down the zombies and she's seeing them morph into people as they're being chopped down. And then like one of the most interesting parts was when she finds that house. And at first 
she sees the old lady, you know, waving at her. But then after that, you know, it winds up being a walker. And that was just kind of crazy. I mean, she's going through some serious PTSD. Uh, but, you know, look, this is Carol. We've seen her go through a lot of stuff. But I, I think that at the end of the day, she'll be able to bounce back. Like, no one has able, you know, like, like no one has been able to before. You know, this is what she does. And, I mean, come on. We, we all love seeing Carol do her thing. So I'm excited to see where, you know, where she goes once she gets her faculties in order. Yeah, she's, she's definitely got some PTSD. I think what broke Carol was when the two little girls died back with her and um, what's his name? Um, started with a T, I think. The dude, the, the dude's brother, the, the, the black guy. When, when they were with Tyrese. The Tyrese, yeah, when they were with the two little girls and Carol had to kill one because the other one killed the girl because she was crazy, I think that's when Carol's, you know, psyche started falling off a little bit. You know, she did save everybody at Terminus, you know, but I just think she hasn't been the same ever since. She hasn't had Daryl around her for a while. Daryl was always her backbone, and now... Morgan is kind of taking over that, you know, role with her. And and on top of that, Carol got injured when they met up with the with the with the fake police people that killed Beth. So there's a lot of stuff going on with Carol, you know, for a couple of seasons now. Um, so let's get to the main point. We get to the kingdom and we meet King Ezekiel. Dude's got a tiger. He was a he was a zookeeper. And I swear to you, when we when I was watching this episode, I was like, man, this dude's an ex-zookeeper. I swear to you. I just it just felt right. I was like, why would a guy have a tiger in the middle of all this unless he's animal related, working for PETA or something like that, man? What were your first thoughts on getting introduced to Ezekiel? Um, I wasn't sure what to think about him at first because I mean you know, here you have him, he's sitting like literally on a stage and in the background it's got a painting of a castle he's got a guard next to him on one side and then he's got a tiger and when Carol gets wheeled down and she's looking and she's just like I I don't know what's going on here you're like, and she's like I don't know what's going on in the, in the most wonderful way possible and just seeing her reaction was priceless, though, because, you know, she still tried to play that sweet, innocent, you know, kind of uh, motherly role. And Ezekiel was able to see through that pretty quickly. And um, also, you know, when when they got out of there, she was like, are you shitting me? <laughs> to Morgan. Uh, and Morgan had to try to tell her, like, oh, look, yeah, I get it. You know, this is this is a little out there, but uh, you know, we can work with these people at least. So, I mean, that that was a, a good thing just to to see how, uh, just to see how we have the, hmm, you know, that just to see that there's a group that still seems to be clinging on to hope. I mean, they have a societal. Structure, and I'm pretty sure we'll get to see more of how the kingdom works later on. Uh, but I think that you know they had to give us this kind of shock and awe just to bring us into the world and how things are, are way different for other groups than they have been for uh, the Atlanta survivors. Yeah, what I'm seeing with The Walking Dead is I'm really seeing the, the, the way that they're setting up different leadership structures. You see Negan and the Saviors, and they're obviously the bad guys, you know, and then you see the Hilltop Gang, and, you know, they kind of had like a, like a, like a governor-type figure leading them, but he wasn't really as crazy as the governor, but... He was kind of out there. He was, you know, what, what do they call that, eccentric or whatever. And then you get Ezekiel, and he's ten times more eccentric than what we saw at the hilltop. And it's, it's just I like what they're doing here. They're, they're planting flags. 
They're showing us the different terrains. They're showing us this group does this, this group does this. But everybody eventually gives Negan what he needs and produces for him because he's the big big man on campus. And sooner or later, something like that always breaks. You're not just going to be eating all the resources because you're beating everybody up. You're killing people. That's not going to work. And this transitions us into what the kingdom people are giving Negan's group, the saviors. They're feeding them pigs with that are fed to zombies. So we're assuming that they don't. That the first thought I got on this, before I go deep on this, give me your reaction on what you saw about this. When you first saw these pigs eat in the, the, the walker and you knew what was happening. All right, when I when I had first seen them eating the walkers, I you know like, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the, you know the first thing was like, okay, uh, they're not gonna take those back to their people, are they? Because they hadn't already established that that the kingdom also was giving food to uh, to Negan's group, you know. So it was one of those things where I was like. This is interesting. I'm wondering what's going on here. And I was wondering, are they in league with the Saviors or do they have the same deal with the Saviors? And then by the time uh by the time Ezekiel's like, Hey Morgan, I want you to come along with me while we do this thing, I was like, Yeah, 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 it's basically a deal with the Saviors. Uh the interesting part though is that other than that close knit group of people that was with Ezekiel, no one else at the kingdom knows that this is going on. Uh, but once you see that it was like, okay, uh, when I saw them, you know, have the two, uh, the two trucks with, you know, some of the pigs went with them and then the other pigs went the other way. I was like, Oh, okay. They're going to take those to, uh, to the saviors and then the thing i thought when they came back it was like oh they you know they slaughtered them they took out the guts they skinned them and i'm like oh okay i i get it now because that's the way that these guys when they actually do show up the pigs are pretty much already prepared for them you know and this way they're not going to discover oh you know look what look is what's inside this pig's intestines you know, so that was a pretty smart strategy on their part. Uh, now, I, I want to know whether it's actually going to take, though. See, I didn't even think about it like that. So I'm kind, I'm kind of glad you brought that up, that would someone actually check what the pigs are eating and open them up? I mean, it's possible if they got a butcher in there, you know, and, and they got to, you know, they do that, you know, in like a grocery store setting. But like, I immediately, when I saw this happening, because they, they showed it to us the way Morgan found out. Morgan found out, and Ezekiel explains to him, yeah, or, or the other guy, I forgot, the other kingdom guy explains to him that this is what they do. They have to give Negan's group food to not get attacked. But they're going to give him shitty food. They're not giving him good food. They're giving him shitty food. They're giving him tainted food. They're giving them zombie food. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then you start thinking like, okay, Rick's group knows that everybody's already infected with the virus. With their Rick's group knows that they're, that they're all going to be turned into zombies if they die. Do other people know? Because because then what would be the point of feeding the pigs? Because I'm assuming they're feeding the pigs the zombies so that when Negan's group eats this, they all turn sick and die. And then they turn like that that's what i'm assuming they're basically killing them from the inside you can't kill negan's group in an army battle style but you can kill them from the inside you know what i mean put a you know do some biological warfare on those asses you know what i'm saying some chemical warfare you know so i'm thinking nobody else knows other than rick's group that they're already all infected man do you think other groups know that they're all fucked when they die I don't think that they know that specifically. I mean, you know, in terms of it being a worldwide uh, incurable virus. I mean, because remember, you know, Rick found out because of the dude from the CDC 
in season one, like right before they were all, you know, right before they escaped out of there. So that was, you know, just a, a crazy thing because remember Rick didn't even tell anybody for a while, you know, it was like halfway through season two before he actually said, Hey, well, yeah, remember that guy at the CDC who wound up being, you know, like literally a mad scientist. Well, yeah, he told me that everyone is affected and basically we are the walking dead. Um, so just, you know, with that whole thing, it was pretty interesting that now we see people who are purposely trying to poison others. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they have seen anyone die of natural causes. You know, there's all these uh, walkers that are popping up, but whether they have actually seen someone die and they know, like, once you die, you turn... That, that's debatable. Uh, like, we haven't really seen that explained yet. Yeah, that that would be interesting. That would be because, you know, this, 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 this is an awesome, you know, type of warfare Ezekiel's group's doing. I can't wait to see how it plays out. I hope we get to the end of the season and they kind of show us people getting sick in Negan's group and them killing them from the inside. That'll be real interesting. Um. And this was a heavy, this episode was a really heavy Carol episode. We get the different stages. At this point, after we're introduced to the, 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 the Walker pigs and all that, we got Carol, you know, planning her escape. She's trying to get the hell up out of there. Ezekiel to her is just crazy. She, she said it was a circus. She's like, man, this is a circus. I need to get out of here. You know what I mean? She's probably never experienced anything like this. She's trying to get the hell out. She's pretending to be all, you know, she, she was doing the act that she was doing at Alexandria and trying to pull the wool over people. But Ezekiel wasn't having it. You wasn't going, you know, just keep doing that babe in the woods routine and, and try to get away with it. Ezekiel caught on and that, and that was it, man. What, what, what would you think about what Carol was, you know, planning out? I mean, look, it was obvious that she had to get caught you know, like, if it wasn't her getting caught in that garden, it would have been her getting caught on the road. Uh, you know, not that it was necessarily foreshadowed, but you could tell that Ezekiel was not a dumb man. And if it wasn't uh, Ezekiel that caught her, it would have been Morgan, you know. So I think it was interesting that, you know, he he had Jerry with him. And I'm still wondering... How much does Jerry actually know? Because Jerry seems to be uh, Jerry was the comic relief. Like on top of the fact that you already have Ezekiel, which comes off as as a little you know out there. Or, you know Jerry comes and he's like deuces, <laughs> and that was just yeah. the most hilarious thing. And to see Carol now. Uh, you know, trying to explain like, hey, look, I'm not really trying to be here and, you know, then Ezekiel tried to, you know, well, not try to, but he dropped his act, basically, and spilled his guts about who he really was, but he recognized, you know, uh, that she was also putting on an act. He told her, you can't bullshit a bullshitter, you know, and so I thought that was cool that that he was like, alright, well, look, you know, yeah, you're 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 here and you're putting on the act and for people who don't know any better, you can fool them. But I'm putting on an act all the time. It's like you think I'm crazy because you actually believed the you know, the the bullshit that I was spinning, but no, uh, I know that this is, you know, this is just what I'm uh doing and I just happen to be good at it. I'm good enough that people will follow me. And plus, I've got a tiger. So, you know, uh, so, yeah, I just thought that that little heart to heart that they had was was really interesting. And maybe we'll get to see a different side of Carol now that she knows that she's not alone in the way that she's coping with the world, because I think that she might have thought that she was alone just with the way that she had to cope with this whole thing. 
Yeah, that that and and that guy with the comic relief. The whole time he was on screen, I just kept thinking he just reminded me of like a big sumo wrestler anime character. You know, it's just like those funny, you know, anime like a cat type of character in anime. It was so funny. Um, and yeah, so Carol's, you know, this. Then we get to Morgan, and Morgan is like, you know, Morgan's still having his, you know, back and forth with using guns and not wanting to use guns and. You got this kid with him that that Ezekiel wants him to train, you know, trying to do a Mr. Miyagi impression. So everybody wants to know, everybody's basically trying to learn Morgan's, you know, techniques is is what I see. Every time people run into Morgan, they're like, how'd you learn how to use that, you know, stick and teach me, you know what I mean? So he's doing a real good Miyagi, you know, character profile, in my opinion, on the show. He's like the wise guy. He's the wise one. And, and if you can get to where Morgan's at, you'll be better in life. You know what I mean? This is what his character looks like to me. Well, where, where do you think they're trying to go with Morgan, man? I mean, well, for one, I think they were trying to redeem him from last year because, let's be honest, you know, last year, uh, as much as we wanted to see Morgan from before because he was an interesting character. He's the first guy that Rick runs into after the zombie outbreak. And then, you know, when Rick sees him later on, he's crazy. And now he's all super zen and peace-loving and I don't want to kill anybody. And we kind of see that, you know, him letting that one wolf go may have screwed over Alexandria for a little while. And I think that might have pissed off fans a lot. So now I think this is part of them trying to rehab Morgan's image. And also, you know, at the end of the day, Morgan does know how to fight. And they have those people out there who just are not fighters and they need someone to teach them. And so since Morgan is the the best qualified in terms of hand-to-hand combat, who else do you get? I mean, other than Jesus, because, I mean, Jesus was uh, was kicking Rick and Daryl's ass all over the place. But, you know, if, if it's not going to be Jesus, then it's got to be Morgan teaching people how to fight. And, uh, you know, I thought it was cool. Like, I'm wondering how long uh, Morgan and Carol have been at the kingdom by the time we see, like, the little training montage that he's doing with that one kid whose name escapes me right now. But like I said, it was, it was cool to see Morgan's image kind of, kind of get a rehab after, you know, the beating uh, that he took by fans last season. Yeah. And and like, I kind of didn't really look into that, you know, I mean, I guess it does look like he, he, the fans really backlashed on him for letting that wolf go. I mean, I kind of looked at it like that's Morgan, you know, that's, that's his character. You know what he is. You can't get mad at him for not breaking character because that's who he is. He's not just going to kill somebody just because they're a bad guy. He doesn't kill people, period. He tries to change everybody. So I'm kind of, you know, shocked that fans would get mad at that, you know, or because if all characters hated the bad guy, you know, or wanted to, kill the bad guys like shows would be bland you need characters with different you know different psyches different auras about them so i i mean i can see why people got mad at morgan for that but i see him as an integral part of this apocalyptic world somebody like him that's been as deep down as he was going crazy and then coming back up and surviving this long just tells you anybody who survived up to this point they're a G. They're, they're meant to be here. They're meant to do what they're doing. Long may it rain. And the I guess the I, I don't know if there's anything else that was in the episode I can think of other than a couple of those reveals that, you know, Ezekiel, you know, showing himself to Carol, what he truly was. And is, there, is there anything we missed on this episode? You're muted. Sorry about that. Uh yeah, there was the one little interaction between uh the saviors and the kingdom group when they were you know giving them the pigs and the one dude oh, yeah. is is talking shit and they get into that little scuffle and dude you know is like oh yeah yeah I get you know free shots and you know Zeke was like yo get your man 
get your man, you know, be easy. We got it. We got a deal. Your boy, you know, stepped over the line, but you know, then they kind of let him know, like, all right, well, yeah, you know, just make sure you have our food when we come back, or else we're gonna kill that dude first. And I was like, damn, man. Um, you know, uh, look, there's got to be a breaking point where, you know, they're gonna go after uh, after the saviors. Because you you just can't have this whole thing where he's just subjugating these people, you know, to no end. Like, there's got to be an end at some point. So whether it's this season or next season, I don't know. I'm, I'm not up on the comics like that. But Negan's got to have a fall, you know, and they're going to have to band together in, in order to stop him. How they're going to do that, I'm not exactly sure, but, you know, because, I mean, the Saviors are super organized. They are organized, you know, like a military force. And, I mean, they, they've already said that they have all of these satellite outposts, and we don't know how many of them there are. So, you know, they, they still got walkie-talkies and and station houses and stuff. So, I mean, who knows? You might, you know decide to do this all-out assault on them and then find out, like, nah, that was just, you know, another small group. We still got, like, five more groups with, you know, 20 or 30 people each and all, you know, strapped up like like they just came out of the Rambo School of War. So, uh, yeah, man, that's going to be pretty interesting to see, you know, the, the interaction with the Saviors going forward. And if I can, if I can make a prediction... Um, someone from the kingdom is going to get killed off. Maybe a couple of people from the kingdom are going to get killed off. And I think it's possible, and, you know, uh, don't spoil it in the comments, people, but I think it's possible that uh, one of the saviors is going to wind up killing uh, Ezekiel's tiger. Don't want it to happen, but I think I think that is, you know... It's going to be one of those things where Negan is like, oh, look, see, I told you, and, you know, you you didn't produce, and now I got to kill your tiger. Yeah, that's 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 a good prediction. I, I was I was thinking that, that you know, Negan at the end of this might get the Ramsey treatment and, and get like how Ramsey got killed by the dogs. You know what I mean? Negan gets killed by the tiger, and we just get this, you know, babality, this – bestiality type ish you know what i mean it's like mortal combat finish him and the beast comes out you know what i mean the tiger finishes him you know what i mean like i can see that we we getting a good tiger gory death i mean it's just set up right the tiger's gonna get somebody whether it be a walker or whether it be one of the saviors the tigers we're getting to get a gory scene with the tiger before the tiger leaves folks that's how it is uh, you got cgi money you're gonna use it and um, I'm, I predict that Negan, you know, other than us getting the tidbit that, that the pigs are going to, you know, it's like chemical warfare, eating them up from the inside, killing them from the inside, I believe his right-hand man is going to kill him. You know what I mean? We don't know. We didn't read the comics, folks, so please don't spoil it for us. But I feel like on the show it's going to be his right-hand man because power breeds power. These dudes is like a death cult, you know, so – this guy's going to kill Negan so he can get that power and then someone's going to kill him and on and on and on and on. That's what happens in these type of power struggle groups. Like with, with the saviors meeting up with the kingdom people, like I like that interaction because you can see they respect Ezekiel, but then you, you see them put their stamp on it at the end. Like, Oh, if you don't produce, well, we're going to go kill that guy first. Like, you know, that guy was trying to respect Ezekiel, but at the same time, they don't want to give him too much power, so they got to add the, oh, we're going to kill him next if we don't got our shit. You know, you, you, you can see that type of power move they were doing, right? Most definitely. I mean, you know, it was definitely an intimidation factor, and they were going out of their way to let him know, like, we have the power here. Yeah, okay, you call yourself King Ezekiel, and you have the kingdom, but who's really the king? Is it is it you, or is it the guy that you're paying not to kill all of your people right now? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not just going to, you know, you're not just going to, you know, suppress these people into giving their food and all this and over and over and over. There's gonna obviously there's gonna be a breaking point at the end of this season. It's only episode two. You can see it coming. It's probably not gonna be Rick's group that gives him the gives Negan's group the business. It'll probably be the kingdom. The people don't forget they got horses. I've never seen this. I mean, no other groups got, you know, livestock to their advantage the way these people got livestock. They got horses, they got pigs, God knows what else they got. They got a tiger. You know what I mean? We got the whole zoo out here, man. True indeed, but I mean, listen, you know, uh, the saviors have trucks, they yeah. had guns, and it seems as though they are willing to do anything. You know, like, I don't know that the, the people from the kingdom are willing to do anything. The saviors are willing to do anything. I mean, Think about it, man. In order to get Rick to come to heel, you know, Negan was like, hey, you know, I'm going to make you cut your son's arm off. I'm going to make you do it. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not doing it. No, no, no. Go ahead. Cut your son's arm off or, or else I'm going to kill all these other people. So, you know, that's just one of those things where, you know, I don't know that anyone else is willing to take it there. Yeah. Negan is willing to take it there. So anyone anyone who's willing to do the things that you wouldn't even think about, you're going to have to keep your eye on them. You're going to have to, you know, play things very, very... Uh, you're going to have to be very astute in your observations. And really think about how you were going to play this because one wrong move and someone gets to gets to meet Lucille in the worst way possible. Yeah. This was a very calm episode. It was it was a real I wouldn't call it a filler, you know, in the in the in the sense, but you know, we got a lot of you know, we, we, we learned a lot of things. We were introduced to new characters, which I like. I like when the show gives us new things to, you know, new things to think about, new things to see. We didn't get the, the main group at all. We got to come back to Carol. We got to come back to Morgan, let them do their business. Next week, obviously, they're going to go back to the main group, and we're going to, you know, see the aftermath of what happened in episode one with the deaths, the major ish. What's happening with Maggie? Did she go into the hilltop? Yada, yada, yada. This was a real interesting episode. And, you know, I think that's all we got for it, man. Are you, you cool with all that? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the little time we give to talk about our favorite shows. You chilling here with Mo Genie. You chilling with Don Willie. This is what it is, folks. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe. Don Willie, tell the people where to find you. I mean, you can find me on my channel. You know, it's Don Willie, D O N W I L L I. Make sure to check out my review and uh, slash discussion for season one of Luke Cage. Make sure to check out. Game of Thrones, a case for Dan and Dave. And as soon as I finish uh, getting over these technical problems, I will be uploading for the people who aren't such fans of Dan and Dave, the case against Dan and Dave. Hopefully I will have that out by Saturday, barring any uh, you know mishaps with uh, technical difficulties. And, you know, more videos. More videos to come. So, rate comment, subscribe, share, tell your friends, come back for more, and right, listen, you know, thanks again for having me, Moji, and dab on out of here, you know how I do. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is what it is, folks. I'll see y'all on the next one. Hopefully we'll do this every week. We recap, we review, when we do the do. Peace.